Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, number of laser beams in a bank. We're given a 2D matrix, it's binary, meaning there are only zeros and ones, but each row is not given as an array, it's given as a string, which doesn't really mean anything in this case. But the idea is that zeros are like empty blocks like this. Ones are laser beams like this. We have a few laser beams here in the first row. The second row doesn't really have anything in it, it's all empty, but the third row has a couple laser beams as well. Every single laser beam in the first row will connect with every single laser beam in the next row that has laser beams. In this case, this row doesn't have anything, so we kind of skip it. We just assume it doesn't even exist. But this is the next row that does have some laser beams. So this one will connect with this, and it will connect with this one. Same thing with this guy. It will connect here and connect there. Same thing with this one. It'll connect here and it'll connect there. In other words, the number of lasers here is basically gonna be the number of laser beams in the first row, which is three, and there's two in this row, so the number of these that are actually formed is just gonna be three times two, which is six. With the next row here, we have two laser beams and one laser beam in the last row. The rule is that these cannot connect with the next row. Like we can't skip a row. Only laser beams in adjacent rows can be connected. And when I say adjacent rows, I basically mean uh, like these rows kind of don't exist, like the ones that don't have anything. We have six laser beams. And then we had two here and then one here. So we basically do two times one. That's two more laser beams. And you can kind of see them here. This is one and this is two. So once you kind of know that you're just multiplying the number of lasers in every like adjacent row pair, you've pretty much solved the problem. The only thing you have to do is account for the empty rows. For example, how we would solve this problem, and by the way, what we're ultimately trying to do is return the number of like laser beam connections. So what we would do is go through the first row, count how many laser beams there are, and it's possible that there might be zero. And that would be fine because for the next row, we're gonna keep going until we find a row that actually does have some laser beams. And it happens to be this one. It has two, this one has three. So then we multiply these two together, add it to the result. And next we consider this was like the last row that actually had laser beams and its count was two. We would remember that in case we had to skip some additional rows. In this case, we don't. So we'd count, okay, this row has one laser beam and we would do the arithmetic. If this one actually did have zero, it would still work out because this one has two. We'd multiply these together and we'd get zero, which is fine. But then we'd say this is the lasers in the previous row that actually did have lasers. And then we'd find that this one has one and then we'd still do one times two and we'd get the result, assuming that these ones didn't exist. So basically I'm saying we actually don't have to worry too much about edge cases as long as when we're iterating through the current row, we keep in mind, we have like a condition for if it doesn't have any lasers at all. Solving it this way, we only have to iterate over the matrix once. So let's say n times m are the dimensions of it. That would be the time complexity. We don't really need any other data structures. Memory complexity is gonna be constant. Now let's code this up. So what I'm gonna do is for the first row, just count the number of lasers. I'm gonna call that previous. And we could do that with a loop if we really wanted to, but there is a built-in method. We can say bank at index i, this is the first row, and we can count the occurrences of the one character. So that's the easiest way to do it. And then we can go through every row starting at index one and skip the first row. And uh, we can get the current count of the row, same way, just saying bank at index i, let's get the count of it, which is one, get how many ones it has. And now is when we check if current is greater than or equal to zero, we could do that, well, it's greater than zero. We could do that like that, or we can just do it like this. Now, if it actually is, that's when we can do the multiplication. That's when we can say add to the result the product of previous times occur. And we should probably declare the result here. And initially, we'll just set it to zero. And also, that is what we're going to return out there. Remember, we're only going to assign previous to a count that is non-zero. Because if we were to encounter zero here, we're not gonna set that to zero because we always wanna remember the last row that actually did have some laser beams. So inside of the if statement, this is very important, inside the if statement is when we will assign previous 
to Kerr. If this were zero, we definitely would not want to make this assignment, though I think you could probably move this out of the if statement if you wanted to, and I think it would still work. So we're ready to run the code, but I notice here I have bank at index i. I think that should actually just be bank at index zero. Really sorry about that. We do want the first row, but this is the entire code. Let's run it to make sure that it works. As you can see on the left, yes, it does, and it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.